Hey everyone, I'm Dr. Neil Paulvin, host here of the Life Optimized podcast. Thanks for hopping on. And you're going to hear today my first solo uh, podcast. We're going to go into a really deep dive. This is part one, I'm sure, of many uh, episodes that we're going to talk about uh, peptides and bioregulators and how they interact with um, other tools in terms of anti-aging or inflammation or sports recovery and mitochondria health and so on and so on and so on and so on. Because peptides are awesome. They just have a lot of great possibilities. We're just, I think, hitting uh, the surface of that. They become hitting the mainstream. So we're going to go through a deep dive here. What I'm going to do, since there's just so much information and I get so many questions on it, and what I'm going to do now is try to break it down into pieces uh, as we do this one. I'm hoping I'm to get some great guests who are experts in peptides and some other facets regarding anti-aging and peptides. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the first half here, or we're going to hit about eight to 10 peptides. I'm also going to do some of the most common questions that I get asked about peptides first. I'm going to also make sure that we're going to hit some basic things for people who are very new to peptides and really don't know anything about them. But I'm also going to try to do some deep dive type topics to make sure that you, um, the people who really want to know some nitty gritty stuff and who are pretty well versed in them also uh, learn a lot of different things from them. So here's the first question always get what in the world are peptides? Should I be doing them? Do I need to do injections? So on and so forth. So first thing, peptides are groups of small amino acids. I mean, there are peptides that are like five amino acids. There's peptides that are maybe uh, 200 amino acids are components that make up protein, small proteins, and they exert a, a specific effect. It's like a, all the peptides out there are kind of a, like a lock and key. They may work on an enzyme. They may work on a certain area of the organ. They may work on the immune system. Uh, they may work on the gut. They may work on different areas. A lot of the peptides do, and you'll hear it throughout the discussion today and through future podcasts on peptides that um, they have a lot of different uh, ways of working. Second piece is going to, the question I always get is how um, long do I need to take them for? And that's variable. Um, there are peptides like dihexa, which is a brand peptide. You only want to do it for four or six weeks. There's a peptide like BPC-157, which is one of the most easy, kind of the first ones we'll talk about today, which you can use for several months, four to six months. All peptides should be cycled. They should not be used in perpetuity. They should not be um, just kind of used at random doses, you should have a plan. They should be cycled, um, should go on and off of them. Um, they're not just something that you can just take continuously, even though I know there's a lot of people out there who say that you can. Um, there's just so, some of them have a lot of risk. We just don't know all of the long-term benefits and or risks of them. So um, we've done a lot of studies that have been out there for a lot of these peptides, and I'll break that down, what we know as we kind of go through. Some have been FDA approved, some have not. That leads into our next question of, are peptides FDA approved? I keep hearing that they're trying to ban them and so on. So here's kind of what happens. Some peptides have been or do have approval in, in other forms. Tesmorone, which is one of the growth hormone peptides, is being used as originally a peptide that's been used for HIV uh, issues. So that does, is FDA approved. Some of the melanotan uh, peptides, which help with erectile dysfunction and the colon unquote Barbie peptide, which helps with tanning, they are now being used for sexual dysfunction. They are, some of them are now FDA approved. Um, a version of thymosin alpha-1 is FDA approved. A lot of the other peptides are not, are not FDA approved. So they are like other things you may get from a compounding pharmacy or a supplement where they are, those pharmacies are regulated by a government, but they are not FDA approved. Um, I do not recommend getting peptides for, from a pharmacy that is not regulated like a compounded pharmacy and don't get peptides from where well, you have no idea if they're being regulated or not. You just don't know what you're getting. You don't know what doses, if there's any chemicals in there, there's a huge risk. So that is uh, the effort in terms of that question. There are other questions, how do I take them? And that is, again, I'm gonna break that down as we go through the different peptides that are out there in terms of how you take them. Um, the most common is injection of belly. That's the one where you're still gonna get the most bang for the buck. I mean, that's something that doesn't hurt that badly. People think it's gonna hurt really badly, it doesn't. You may get a, re a small mark. Um, the certain pieces will get a little bit of a reaction to it like you would in the other shot. You can go to the inner leg to avoid some of the cosmetic appearances if that concerns you. So that is the most common way. Some are done weekly, like MOTC, which we'll talk about in a future pep in future podcast. 
and BBC 157, which is and Thymus and Beta 4, and I think most of the peptides that we're talking about today are done almost daily. Um, those are injections, but there are now a lot more different formulations that are out there. You can take some of these orally, like BBC can be done orally. The thing is that a lot of times BBC is done for gut health. And if you're going to take a peptide for gut health, and you have a problem with your gut, and then you're going to try to absorb a pill, this is questionable how well it works. Um, there's no set data in terms of well, how much better one is versus the other. I, what I've seen anecdotally is at least a 25% difference in strength. But again, that's just anecdotally. There's no studies that back that up one way or the other. Again, there are also different formulations. You can now get a lot of these in cream form. Um, that's great for skin. Another one we'll get into things like GHK and uh, again, their BPC, which we'll talk about today. They're great for skin. They're also good for inflammation for local areas. So that's where that does come in and, be, and is very helpful. You can also get a lot of them now are coming in nose spray form. BPC and thymus and beta-4 are now available in, in nose spray, which is great for some brain effects. Um, you, you may get some systemic effects, not the same as you would from, uh, not as the same as you would get from an injection or an IV, but it's much simpler to do, much simpler to travel with. Um, the other, like I mentioned, IVs, some of these can be done IV. We do a BPC can be done IV, thymus and beta-4 can be done IV, some of the immune peptides can be done IV. Um, so those are things you need to be aware of. Um, so that's, um, uh, but again, those you want to be done through a doctor, the goal of that is to get us to higher dosage, to get better absorption, to get a quicker response, especially somebody who has some chronic illness, um, or a severe injury. I mean, I've had patients who've had broken bones or a torn, in, a torn ligament or, um, muscle, and that's the way to get a higher dose and a lot quicker. And it's yielded pretty good results. Um, there's not many studies on IV peptides, um, but this is really fascinating how well they work. So that's kind of some of the basic things that you need to know. They do play well with others. They work well with, they work well in terms of working with other components that we'll talk about through this podcast and other bioregulators, which are small proteins um, that really exert a small a specific influ influence on an organ, um, brain or ovary or liver. Um, they work really well together, or you can cycle from doing the peptide to the bioregulator. And we're going to have somebody on specifically talking about bioregulators in the future. Um, they work well with things like lotus naltrexone. They work well with anti traditional anti-inflammatories. You can do uh, work well with supplements. They they work really well with very minimal interaction. Um, Trying to think, most of those are pretty easy to use. Um, you don't really need to monitor the doses. Um, side effects. I have a question about the main side effects besides that reaction. Um, BPC-127, which we're going to talk about in a second. You can, you, if you are sensitive to histamines, that's something that you want to be careful with. Um, you do, uh, that's pretty much the, the other things that you're going to get some side effects. The growth hormones may make you have a histamine reaction as well, especially if you go up the dose too quickly. Um, you may have an issue with sleeping. Um, those are the main side effects. A lot of the other ones don't really have a lot of side effects to them. Um, if you do have a chronic illness, unfortunately, Lyme disease, fibromyalgia, um, I see a lot of what are called floxing or patients who've had sensitivity to certain antibiotics, then you really need to go much slower, much lower dose, not because it's the peptide specifically, but your body is just not capable for the change as quickly as the, the, the peptide is going to give it to you. And you want to go a little bit um, slower dosing, doing every second, third, even I've done once a week to get people tolerant of it and then move on. So that's pretty much the basics of the peptides. Um, again, they should be usually done through a doctor. They should be done through a compounded pharmacy where you know what you're getting. Um, you definitely Dosing varies all over the place. I mean, there's some patients you really want to start really low, especially if you're dealing with a chronic illness. Um, there's other people where you can go on a higher dose if you're trying to treat an acute injury and you know that they've done peptides before or they're comfortable injecting themselves. So there's, again, the dose, I mean, I'm going to get, I always get questions about dosing. I'm going to give, I make certain cases, I'll give some general guidelines. Um, but a lot of cases it's doctor dependent, depends on what product you get and so on um, in terms of the best way to do the peptides. Um, 
So that's what we got in terms of the rules and regulations and the fun stuff. So now we're going to go through here the list of we're going to do a lot of the inflammatory, anti-inflammatory peptides. We're going to do some of the, the quote unquote uh, muscle recovery peptides. There are about four or five buckets, depending on you want to break them down. And again, we'll do some today and then we'll do the rest in other podcasts. Um, again, you have the anti-inflammatory and recovery peptides, which are things like BPC, thymus and beta-4. Uh, GHK copper, uh, tes, uh, morellin, CJC. Um, that's one group. Then you're going to have the, what I call the, um, kind of like the, the, the things that you need to know for lifestyle, things like hair loss and weight loss and maintaining hair. We'll go through those at a separate one. There's a group of mitochondrial peptides, things like SS31 and mont C. They have, and they're in the kind of the anti-aging category as well as the exercise category. Then you kind of have the random ones, the things that work on, on nerve pain, like ARA290 and so on down the list. You have ones for sleep, you have ones for erectile dysfunction. Um, those are kind of the, that, those types of lifestyle type peptides. So there's a bunch, there's probably about 25 to 30 now that we're commonly using. Um, again, and they work really well in conjunction. And we're going to go through them. So the first one that we always get a question about is BPC-157. BPC-157 is body protection compound. Uh, it, it is derived from gastric acid. It is a wonderful peptide. Like I said, the one caveat is that you don't want to take it. Um, if you Not that you don't want to take it. You want to be more cautious with dosing and take it a little slower if you do have some type of mast cell or antihistamine issue. And it can pretty much be used for a lot of different stuff. Um, there's a lot of studies that show that it's beneficial for a lot of different areas. Um, it's been shown to help with st stomach and gastric ulcers. I mean, that's been demonstrated in numerous studies. Um, again, those are things you want to potentially do as an injection because the absorption orally would be questioned. So um, that is the, probably one of the most common reasons we use it. Um, it's also great for, our, for muscle pain, joint pain, and recovery. Um, that again, usually you want to do that either. I'll have my patients do the post workout if they do it in the morning. Uh, you can take it at bedtime. Uh, most patients that would do it in the morning and or post workout, you can do it in a single dose or double dose. That really depends on how I'm dosing it. Um, if I'm going low dose, I tend to do it as one. If I tend to go higher, you can split the dose. If you're looking, if somebody's looking for recovery and muscle building, then you definitely want to be doing a dose after your workout. Um, so it's really beneficial there. Um, it, it's going to help boost nitric oxide, which again, is going to help boost your workout. It's going to dilate the blood vessels, hopefully induce more muscle hypertrophy. So in, very important in that regard. Uh, BBC is great for doing, again, doing gut things, things like Crohn's colitis um, or um, ulcerative colitis. Really helpful in that, in that respect. You can find out with an autoimmune peptide like a thymus and alpha-1. Um, or a KDV um, or a lotus naltrexone, which is not a peptide. It works really well in that respect. Um, it's been shown to help with um, regulating the neurotransmitters, things like serotonin, norepinephrine, and dopamine. So it may help a little bit with mood. Um, it is really good for things like headaches. Um, we use it in um, our TBI or concussion or patients who have brain fog because it does help um, with the brain inflammation. That as well as some other ones, things like steribolysin and thymus and beta-4, but again, very helpful. Um, it is gonna, it, again, it's really good for helping um, patients who have some type of tendon damage or muscle damage. If you have a rotator cuff tear, a partial tear, it could be done either as an injection to the belly. The doctor, um, if they have the ability to, can inject it right either right into the joint. I mean, I've done plenty of shoulder and knee injections with it. Um, or you can inject into the tendon. Um, again, these things are being studied to see how well it works. Um, then there's also <clears throat> to be done IV, as I mentioned in the beginning of the podcast. So BPC has wonderful um, benefits. You may have heard something called the Wolverine um, protocol, which is BPC with TB500 and uh, growth hormone peptide like a CJC. That's where you just get incredible benefits all combined together. 
those, I mean, that is where you, again, you want to stack them. Stacking is where you get more benefit by combining two or three than just the individual benefits. Um, but those are things that we'll go through as I go on. Um, but BPC is some, usually in most cases a very good place to start. Um, the next one I mentioned, I mentioned already several times, is thymus and beta-4 or TB500, which is a small fragment um, it's from the thymus, uh, thymusin, which means the benefit of that one. It does have a little more immune regulating capability. Um, TB4 and TB500 are usually done either injection into the belly. There are some nose sprays out there. I mean, that is, I find is better for brain health um, as opposed to doing um, recovery or in, in recovery or specific inflammation um, or even some muscle buildings. It does work on the actin protein um, in muscle to help recover and rebuild muscle. Uh, so it's something that, again, depending on what you're looking for, um, it's also really good for, it's something that we now use as an injection for hair loss. It should be part of our cocktail um, of, you can use it with GHK copper, which we'll get into in a couple of minutes, um, PHT DBM, as well as, um, so there's one more that'll come to me, enzyme thymulin, um, as well, which can be done as a, as a cocktail to be used with some of your other hair loss protocols. Um, it's also really good for concussion protocols, uh, TBI, which is traumatic brain injury. Um, it just has so many benefits to it um, that it's available. Again, something that because of the in theory, there's hypothetical cancer risk. Um, it should not be done for more than about three to four months usually. Um, you usually want to go at least moderate dosing, no matter how you're doing it, be it either injection or IV. Um, I start the patient to at least on 500 micrograms. You can go much higher uh, as long as regulated by the doctor. And that's with all these peptides. Uh, I tend to be more aggressive in dosing than most. There's also some studies out there that show it may help liver and lung health in terms of recovery from inflammation. Um, so, and, and, the, and there's some studies with cirrhosis of the liver, which is a damage to the liver um, as well. So the dosing, TB4 and TB100 also has incredible capability I think it's something that, again, it works really great with BBC 157. It works really great with its cousin from the thymus, thymus and alpha one or thymulin, um, which I'll do go into in another podcast, which would be very helpful. And again, it can also be done as an injection into a muscle or joint, um, even a trigger point. Um, you can inject a lot of these anti-inflammatory peptides into anything you would inject cortisone into and with less side effects. We can inject into a joint. We can inject into a muscle. We can join to a trigger point, which is a, a spot that you have that refers pain to another area. It could be done into a ligament, a tendon, and so on. Just same thing as cortisone, less side effects. Um, with uh, TB4, TB500, also again, could be given IV, which is very helpful. We realize to get a higher dose quicker. So that is thymus and beta-4. That's the second peptide. Um, the next one we're going to get into is a GHK copper. GHK copper is a naturally derived pop protein that we find in the blood. Um, it is great for wound healing. Um, there are people who have used it to heal wound by itself. You can get it again in clean formulation. You can get an injection right around there. You can do injection into the belly. Um, it is incredibly for, just for skin, for helping uh, decreasing wrinkles and inflammation in the skin. It comes in foam, it, which is a specifically for the face. A lot of times now it's being combined with BBC. It's now sometimes being also combined with some of the other skin um, peptides, uh, lufazil and originaline, um, which are the kind of quote, the Botox peptides, which I'll do a little more on another podcast. Um, you can do that as part of your skincare routine. It's also being used for the hair where you can either use the foam after doing much better by doing microneedling. Um, or you can use it as a hair foam by itself, or sometimes you can inject if you're like you're doing PRP. So there's different ways that it can be done. Um, it's again, it's really good for uh, joint and ligament recovery as well. So again, you can do it as an intra-abdominal injection. Um, you, you can try to push the dosing. Um, you don't want to become too toxic to the copper, so you don't want to go super high with the levels uh, that you're injecting, but it can be done into the belly. Um, it can also be used, in, again, into a tendon or a ligament if there's some damage to, again, a rotator cuff or an elbow or an, um, into the hip. Um, again, when we done through an experienced doctor who knows the benefits and side effects, um, but it works incredibly well. Um, it also has some studies because of its effect on some toll receptors, um, which are specific receptors throughout the body that it may help with 
with brain fog and, and cognition improvement. Um, that's the same for BBC and TB4 and CJC. So a lot of the hand, because some of the reason that you have brain fog or your cognition is not as sharp as it should be is because of this, of this inflammation just from toxins or stress or lack of sleep um, or any lack of um, antioxidant defense. Yeah, that's why these work so well. So again, those GHK copper, really beneficial peptide. Um, that is number three. The fourth one that we're going to talk about in terms of inflammation is is KPV. KPV is kind of a new, much more newcomer to the scene. It's a derivative of the melanotans, which are the Barbie peptides. Um, they also have the erectile dysfunction, a derivative of alpha MSH um, that sometimes give you the pigment. Uh, if you do take melanotans, which I'll talk about in another lecture, uh, another podcast, but melanotans, uh, you can get tanning, you can get very mild, you can look like the woman from something about Mary. Um, for those people who are old enough now to remember that movie. Um, but KPV does not have that tanning side effect or benefit. Um, so KPV has been shown to have specific benefits for a couple of things. It's been studied in psoriasis. Um, and, and it also has been shown to work really well in Crohn's and ulcerative colitis. So it has a gut benefit. It has an autoimmune benefit. Um, it's an anti-inflammatory benefit. And because of decreased inflammation, it can also have a cognitive benefit. Um, again, this is something that can be done either locally um, into the joint or muscle area. Um, I tend to use this more for joints, not as much for tendons and ligaments. The other ones I mentioned, like CJC and B, uh, that's CJC, BPC and JHK, I find are better. And again, anecdotally, meaning with patients, but definitely uh, KPV has a lot of benefits. KPV is much harder to find than some of the other ones now, depending. I mean, that's a thing I didn't mention. Would you find with peptides now? It's a very, if you're going to get higher quality peptides, depending on what state you live in, depends on your access to peptides. California has made it very hard for patients to get in the injectable peptides. You can get the oral ones. Um, there are other states that if you're like in Florida, which is probably the easiest state to get everything that's out there in every form. Um, KPV and injection, again, is hard to get. Um, KPV as a pill is not that hard to get. Um, again, we question a little bit with the absorption. KPV now has really become probably one of the most po popular ones for putting in combination. You can now can get KPV with BPC. So what you're getting is double the anti-inflammatory, double the gut boost. Um, or you can use it even for skin now. So you're getting that with GHK um, or even the, the trio. Um, there's also a peptide, which I guess I can throw here called the rosatide, which helps to heal um, leaky gut. Um, heals that those junctions really well. And with that, so what people are now doing is taking the KPV and or the BBC and they're mixing it in um, with those with the KPV or the BBC and you're getting the gut healing, which is gonna, we know how the gut affects everything. It's gonna affect your skin. It's gonna affect the hair. It's gonna affect your cognition. Um, so now you can get GHK, I'm sorry, not GHK. You can get the KPV with the La Rosa Tide either com compounded together or you can take them separately um, uh, to get a better benefit. The thing with taking anything that's a combo, I always get questions, okay, just take all these together. The thing if you take something that's all together initially is you can't raise, play with the dosing. There's patients who react incredibly well to high, higher doses of, of one, like a BBC, but not re react well to a higher dose of TB4. So you want to find out what your dosing is first in that first month. And then once you know what that dosing is, then you can try to find out the best combo for you. Um, be it cream or pill or injection. Um, you can mix some of the peptides in the same syringe. Um, and that's something I'm gonna put a small little post up here at the end is um, things you need to understand in terms of dosing. Um, actually, in terms of the fact that insulin syringes, when we're you're gonna be looking at things in terms of units. Um, and again, you may take things as low as 10 units, which is about the one or the 10 on your syringe up to one, milliliter, which is usually about 100 units. And that's something you're going to be using if you're using some of the growth hormones that we're going to talk about in a couple minutes, um, or MOTC, which we'll talk about in another uh, podcast, um, which is incredible peptides and probably the most success of any peptide, any peptide besides BPC is probably the MOTC right now. It's insanely popular. Um, so we went through the main inflammatory peptides. I'm going to mention uh, another one kind of that has some success um, is called pentosin. 
Um, it's a prescription they use for some bladder issues called interstitial um, cystitis, IC. Um, it, it really great for decreasing inflammation. There's some studies out now that it may be really good for dealing with inflammation of the joints. It could be injected right in a joint, like you may get like a hyalgan shot or a, um, which helps with inflammation building cartilage. There are some potential eye side effects. We don't see as much with the injection to the joint as you do if you're doing it more systemically. Um, you do want to talk about the side effects with your doctor. Um, because of the potential side effects of Pentosin, I don't use it as frequently as I would use some of the other peptides. If it does, if none of the other peptides work, then I would say it's something that you definitely want to consider. Um, that's Pentosin, um, which you may hear about. It's not as popular or as sexy as some of the other ones. Um, I mentioned this one, kind of split it, because um, I'm going to talk about when I start doing with some of the brain peptides in another podcast, um, Cerbolysin. Cerbolysin is um, a derivative from pig. So if you are kosher or a uh, vegetarian, you can make, it makes the decision if you feel comfortable using it or not. Um, it's from brain. Um, it works in, incredibly well. Um, for it, it boosts BDNF. It helps with uh, several other of the brain um, hormones and uh, enzymes that work in terms of helping the brain, it helps to create neuroplasticity, but that's something we'll kind of delve into in another podcast. But the reason I'm talking about it here is that it's really good in terms of inflammation. It's great where you can do it for brain inflammation for somebody who has traumatic brain injury, concussion, it should be part of your cycle with doing um, BBC or TB4 with it. It's also great for injecting into a tendon or a ligament um, I've had really success with it. Um, I would definitely recommend doing it several times. You can combine it with something called neuropolar therapy, which is injection of sugar water. Um, all these things work really well together. Um, something you definitely want to look into, cerebralysin. Again, if you're not concerned of where it's derived from, something you definitely want to look into is become one of my favorite peptides for pain and inflammation. So that's the first batch. Now we're going to do the, the other part we're going to do here is a deep dive into the growth hormone peptides. And there's always the question, oh my God, growth hormone, it's scary, it's concerning, it's going to mess up my uh, normal growth hormone. So here's kind of what we know and we don't know. I mean, there's not been a huge amount of studies in terms of this long term. We do know that in, the, in theory that there can be a risk of boosting growth hormone too high. There is a cancer risk. What we've seen so far is that the growth hormone peptides on the right doses do not do that. They do not decrease your function long-term of your, of your, of your um, growth hormone. They should be pulsed, meaning that they should be done at bedtime in most cases, at least initially. You can take them after in the end, and during the day post-workout to build, um, to use it for muscle building. Um, you definitely do not want to take them long-term um, just because of the potential side effects. Um, some things we just don't know yet, um, and they are going to work differently. There are about five or six of them. They all have their pluses and minuses um, in terms of cost, in terms of how they can be administered. Some can be have like CJC-1295. You can do nose spray now. You can do oral. You can do self-injections. While Tesmorelum is pretty much just an injection. Um, it's a higher dose. It's about two to three times the price because it's much harder to find. Um, they work on different areas. Um, they start. They used to be what are called GHRP2 and GHRP6, um, which worked on the ghrelin receptors. Ghrelin is what make you hungry. Um, so you get a lot of cravings. You get a lot of bloating. You get a lot of moodiness and angry. And they were a uh, beginner. We also had a product called Sermorelin, which... Um, was old school. Um, I just don't find as much benefit in terms of weight loss and or the, some of the benefits in terms of sleep that we see now with some of the other ones. Um, there's also one called um, PEG MGF, which was an old school one as well that we don't really use as much anymore. Um, they're cheaper and that's why some people may, may appreciate them more because they're less expensive. Peptides, unfortunately, can have a higher price point, especially the higher quality ones. Um, the benefits of the growth hormone peptides, again, they're great for inflammation. Um, they can be done either locally. Um, there's some studies now in terms of doing them and growth hormone itself and help healing um, post surgery from meniscal tears and disc histories, and the list goes on and on and on. Um, like I said, CJC is part of these growth hormone peptides are part of the Wolverine protocol, um, which is the BBC, CJC, and the thymus and beta-4. 
Um, don't worry about getting all these names down. I should mention before we are going to put, you're going to get a transcript of the whole podcast and we're going to put some links to things on my website and other places where you can get some really good information. Um, so just try to listen and try to absorb as much as you can. Again, depending on what your levels are, um, you may have listened two or three times to get all the information out. So again, there's the benefits of the, all the growth hormone peptides in general. You're going to get better sleep, especially if you take it at bedtime, which initially, like I said, most peptides are designed to be taken about uh, right before bedtime, 90 minutes after eating, because it can be affected by insulin production. Um, they can help with sleep. They can help with energy. They do work on stem cells to help with stem cell production, which helps with the healing. Uh, they do help with um, working on sirtuin enzymes, which help in terms of some anti, may have some anti-aging effects. That's still to be seen. It activates uh, enzyme called PGC alpha one, one up that helps with uh, mitochondrial function. Um, so there's a lot of benefits with taking these peptides. Um, they do help with weight loss. They help with putting on muscle, which also have their benefits. So these hormones used appropriately have really good benefit. It's just finding the one that works for you. I, I mean, I, a lot of patients will come in and say, I want this growth hormone peptide or this one. I heard so-and-so was talking about this one. Um, what you need to understand is, and I, again, I, I've been doing this for years, you know, figure out what your goals are. Is, is your goal muscle building? And then you may want to look more to tessamorelin, which I'm going to talk about in a second. Is your goal more weight loss, which is still either the tessamorelin or maybe CGC or AOD? Or do you kind of want to, what I call pocket knife, like CJC 1295? It's not the best for weight loss. It's not the best for muscle building, but it's going to give you the sleep benefits. It's going to make your skin look better. It's going to have the stem cell, um, increase stem cell production. So you're getting a lot of benefits. Um, may not be perfect, but it does a lot of things. Minimal side effects works well. So like I said, in terms of dosing, start with the bedtime dose. If you are going to be doing it, looking for some of the muscle benefits more, you do want to try to do a post-workout. Again, depends on dosing. Also with the peptide, you have to understand, it depends on how many injections you feel comfortable doing at one time. I mean, I have patients who do seven injections. I have patients who only want to do one at a time. So if we're going to do one at a time, we'll try to maximize it either at, at bedtime to get all the effects or just if they're just trying to get the workout to do it after their workout. So it really just depends on what your goals are, lifestyle, are you traveling all over the place now. Um, there's so many different factors. But let's go into tessamorelin first. Tessamorelin, as I mentioned in the beginning, is a peptide that was is FDA approved. It was designed for... Um, HIV, it, it's shown to help with some of the wasting syndromes. Unfortunately, that can be experienced with HIV, especially in the past. Um, it also has great benefits in terms of muscle building and some weight loss. It also has been shown to help with getting the cholesterol down and potentially helping decrease, uh, increase the elasticity of the blood vessel. So it has benefit, a lot of benefits. Again, it's usually done at higher doses, at least one milligram a day is a typical dose. Again, you wanna discuss that with your doctor. It's going to be done usually five to six days a week. Um, it can also be make, it can be given by itself. Or there are combinations with ipamorelin. Usually now, ipamorelin works differently. That is a so tessamorelin, GRH. Um, what ipamorelin works on the ghrelin receptor. So you're working at different receptors. So you can take a lot of combinations together. Um, again, this gets can get really complicated. So we have the ones that will pretty much work on the growth hormone receptor hormone, which is mostly CJC and the CJC and the PEG-MGF. Um, those are the ones that work there. And then you have the ghrelin receptor ones, which are um, M uh, MK677 is the most popular one in ipamorelin. So those are the where, and the GHRP2 and 6, I mentioned, which are the old school ones. So they, you, you, a lot of times you take combinations and take CJC with ipamorelin, um, which a lot of people do, where we'll take tessamorelin with ipamorelin, work really well. There's also combinations where you can do the CJC, the, the ipamorelin and IGF-1. IGF-1, I tend not, is, is a little bit, is not as controllable, it's not as easy to use. I tend to not, and a lot of people don't use it on a, a dramatic basis compared to the other ones. And I'm not going to talk about IGF-1 specifically much. Uh, you do want to do the IGF-1-RA. It's the best in terms of reaction, not having these ebbs and flows of your growth hormone. Um, but again, not one I'm really going to talk about. This peptide, it's a much more specialized one. 
Um, again, it used to be used a lot more than I think it is now, at least personally. I mean, there are some people who still use it. Um, if your IGF-1 levels are low, it's definitely helpful. Um, and again, before anybody does get growth hormone peptide done, they should have a, a, a PSA done. They should have um, an IGF-1 level done. They should have a CBC done. As some people do get issues, I have not seen it on a very um, common basis. There are a lot of people, uh, again, like I said, they're not dramatic uh, in, in changes in terms of growth hormone that we thought we would see before. A lot of times it's the benefits you would have without having the side effects. Um, but again, those are things that we um, that we have to kind of, it's a kind of a game to play to see what works best for you in that in those cases. Um, so let's go through them. So like I said, tusmorelin um, has really great benefit for those for working out muscle weight gain, not as much in terms of the skin and the skin and the energy and the brain fog as much um, in terms of what we see as a benefit of it. I talked about CJC, CJC 1295 by itself or with epimorelin. Um, again, you're going to see the most varied effects with it. You are going to see some weight loss. But right now, with all the other medicines that are out there for weight loss, it should not be a primary one if you're just doing it for weight loss. Um, you may get four pounds. Um, again, there's many other better weight loss peptides, and that's going to be part of the next um, podcast. We're going to talk about things like semaglutide and semaglutide and MOTS and tesofensine and TTA and so on down the list and uh, Mlexinox. I mean, all these are different peptides that work much better for weight loss. Um, and don't have a, any chance of any issues. Um, but it's great, again, you're gonna get better skin, uh, brain cognition, uh, stem cell boosting. So it's really good. It's something that you definitely wanna start at a lower dose and then you can build up. I mean, there are some people that max out a little bit at a high dose. I'm pretty aggressive with it now, much more than I used to before. Um, and then you can combine it with dipamorelin, which is usually a combination of one dose. You know, I can take a bottle of CGC and a bottle of dipamorelin. Um, so I definitely really love CJC. Again, CJC is a growth hormone releasing hormone agonist, which means it works in the same spot that growth hormone would. Other ones are ghrelin, which is an agonist, or again, where the ghrelin works. You got to think of these things like lock and a key. Um, it turns out how things work. Next one, we're going to talk about it, abutamurin. Um, you may hear it as MK677. Um, I like this peptide more than most do. Um, this one is kind of a little bit like my analogy I use for a lot of these types of things. It's kind of like a 17 year old driving a Ferrari. It's a lot of power. You just don't know where it's going to go. Um, this is a, a grunt works at the ground site. So you are going to get a little bloating. You are going to get a little hungry or hangry with it. Um, so there are a little more side effects to this one than some of the other ones. Um, I, this one is definitely much more muscle boosting one. I have not seen a lot of people say they've gotten a lot of the other benefits that you do. You get some little bit of skin, a little bit of brain. There's again, there's a better one to do. It. And that's what you have to understand with a lot of these peptides is that now there are so many out there just because you've heard somebody saying, taking something a year ago or five years ago, there are better things out there now. So you want to use things for their best features, especially with what you're paying for some of these. Again, any of these peptides are going to run you anywhere from 150 to $900 per month, at least, if, if you're doing an IV or you're doing multiple ones at the same time. But a butamorin is an oral pill. Um, you're not gonna do it for more than two months. Um, I tend to find, just again, these are things I see in patients. Um, I tend, my men who are trying to build muscle really like it. Um, again, you can, the, my female patients don't like it as much, especially if you're on the, on the smaller side, the more petite side. Um, they get a little more bloating and hangry with it. They don't like it and they sw may switch to something else. Some women do like it. Um, but again, I tend to let, let patients know about the side effects more with the MK. You can do CJC with MK um, or you can do um, an old school summer around with it. Um, if you want all the benefits, again, that you have to really understand that you may have some side effects in terms of mood. You may get a little hangry. Sleep may be disturbed initially, but again, it's for two months. MK is one of the best ones for muscle building. Um, and again, I, for muscle, the muscle building, I guess all the time, I don't prescribe any of the SARMs, things like oxidrandolone and those things. I just don't talk about it. I don't prescribe. They have too many side effects. Those are steroids. Um, these are not steroids. So we talked about abutamorin. The last one that we're going to talk about today is AOD. AOD is a form of growth hormone. 
9604. Um, and it has two purposes in terms of the inflammation. Um, it can help inflammation no matter what. Um, it can be given as an injection, same way as you would with the other growth hormones you want to give it at bedtime. It, okay for weight loss. And four or five years ago when it was only game in town or one of the few ones in town, it was much higher, more highly desired um, in terms of weight loss. I have not seen great weight loss with it. I've seen patients maybe lose two to three pounds a month on it and it's expensive for what it is. It does work for some patients, if they, um, but it's not the best. Again, it's also in terms of the benefits in terms of inflammation and cognition. Eh. It's something that if you were specifically wanted, I prescribe it. It's not my favorite. It's there. Again, that's what's great is that you have now, but again, 30 of these guys by themselves, and you can just take them and, and move them around in the toolbox. Um, I'm not, again, I'm not a huge fan of it. The one I am, the form I'm, I am I'm probably more of a fan of now is there's now a form of AOD with hyaluronic acid, which means you get the benefit of a growth hormone. You get the benefit of hyaluronic acid. So yeah, this AOD is also can be very helpful, uh, especially with the hyaluronic acid. So that is the first tour of peptides. Um, we're going to delve into a bunch more of them. Um, as we go on, things like the mitochondria, the anti-aging, hair loss, weight loss, um, sexual dysfunction, uh, how to live to 100 peptides, how you mix them with bioregulators, how to take them, how to inject them, and so on and so forth. So if you have any questions, uh, definitely place them in the comments. Uh, please like and follow the Life Optimized podcast, and see you guys soon. Bye-bye.